Okay, so here we are in uh, the formatting section of this uh, overview of the score editor in Logic. Now, this is what you'll see um, probably when you first enable score. Now, I've just uh, enabled score down here um, in the bottom section of the page here. Same place that you would find the mixer, piano roll, uh, etc. Um, and what you're seeing here is um, the information inside uh, this top region here, uh, MIDI instrument one, it is just a MIDI file. Okay, now this is one way of looking at it in the piano roll, and the score is just simply another way of looking at it. Okay, now Logic is doing all this work for you. Um, now you can input, you know, music into the score editor by hand, uh, or you can just play it in you know on a keyboard and Logic will just display it for you um, so you know like I said you don't need to know uh, you know that this note here is an A uh, on the st on the staff you know because Logic will interpret that for you okay now then uh, what we want to do is um, get this working um, I'm just going to open this page now what I'm seeing here is um, that lead line the melody line now it's only showing me that part. Um, now to see everything on your arrange page, uh, you want to hit this little button here. It's called Leave Folder, and this gives you a global overview of um, your arrange page, basically. So if you have ten MIDI parts or MIDI regions, uh, they'll be stacked on top of each other here uh, in a linear view, and this is the uh, default view of the score page. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, enable Page View. Uh, to give us an idea of what we're going to be printing. Um, now then, the whole kind of, kind of the main thing about the score editor is formatting the page to get it to look nice and tidy. Um, so that's where most of the work comes in. Um, now then, um, all of this can be accessed from uh, layout uh, and you have these uh, settings here global format names and numbers tablature cores and grids etc etc um, now these can also be accessed via project settings uh, score as your formatting options are project based they're not global to logic uh, so if I were to open this up here you can see I've got a load of tabs here names and numbers tablature now these are exactly the same as they are found in this layout menu now up the top here you have something called staff styles uh, which we'll look at. Um, this is just how you uh, present uh, your staffs. Um, but the first thing we're going to do here is uh, to sort out some space on our page for our header. Um, if you remember from the last video I had a title up here, some chord boxes and I need to get some space here. Now, seeing as I'm in um, the global score view here, and I can see all my parts, um, you'll notice here I have two columns, one that says score and one that says part. Um, now, the parameter I want here is called header space. Um, now, if I um, just enable my uh, margins by going to page display options, margins, uh, you'll see I have some lines appear here. Now, these are guides. Uh, these are orange ones are the page margins, uh, kind of print margins, print guides. This purple one is the header um, margin. Now, if I crank up header space in this column here, score my global score view to three, you'll notice that I get some uh, space at the top here. Now, I can grab that and drag it. Uh, like this and you'll see that the numbers r are reflected here um, so I just want to change that to 3 okay and just hit return there now you'll notice that if I click on a staff um, and actually enter that part my margin uh, my header space has disappeared this is because um, in the part view and we are inside a part at the moment uh, it's still only on one, so I'm actually going to want to crank that up to three. Now, if I go to leave folder again, uh, you can see that now 
it's the same in both views okay so that's something to think about uh, so you you know you can define if you only want to print out one part you know you can just work in the part uh, part view or you know if you've got many parts uh, work in the score view here it's best to kind of match these up um, now I also have some other parameters in global like how many bars do I want per line uh, you may think that this is looking a bit cramped uh, and you may want to add a bit of space so I could say uh, in my global view I only want four bars uh, per, per line to make it a little easier to read uh, the same would go with a part here if I were to enter um, a part you can see it's gone back to the old display if I went up to four now you can see it's the same okay so I'm not going to bother with that though I uh, just thought I'd show you that uh, let's go leave fold and get back into our global view now I'm quite happy with that space I'm quite happy with my margins um, nothing more to change there I don't think uh, so what I'm going to do now is go into name, numbers and names. Now, first on this list is page numbers. Now, obviously, if you're dealing with a long song, um, you're going to have multiple bars, you know, uh, which is going to need multiple pages to print out. Uh, and it's usually a good idea um, to have those pages numbered um, so they go in the right order. Um, so everybody's reading from the same page. Now I have mine centered at the bottom. If I just scroll down here, you can see my page number down here, number one. Uh, and that keeps everything nicely out of the way, nice and clean. The next thing is bar numbers. Now, bar numbers are quite important, but they're not so important that you want them on every bar. Um, we want to put some chord symbols in here above this line and everything's going to start getting really messy now what you'll find in most uh, printed scores is that the bar numbers are only represented at the beginning of each line um, that way you still have a reference to you know kind of where you are uh, without clogging up the uh, score with all these numbers um, now then the way to do this, if you see here, it says step, and there's a little thing here that says zero equals line. Okay, so if I crank this down to zero, you can see that you know the bar numbers across the page disappear, but I still have you know bar one here and bar nine. Now, say I was in that hundred bar song, and you know we wanted to drop in at sixty-five, and you know I said, uh, okay, we're going from bar sixty-five, and you had no bar numbers it would be impossible to count those bar numbers uh, and find out where you were uh, in the score so just having some reference um, at the front of each line um, is a good idea now then uh, next on this page is uh, instrument names now here you can see I've got instrument 1 and instrument 2 okay now these refer if I just go back into my arrange to my channel names okay now here I've got glockenspiel grand piano and these are the preset names uh, but if I click on uh, this track here you can see instrument one that is the name of my channel strip um, so to reflect this uh, in the score as something you know relevant uh, to the uh, staff I'm going to want to rename that so I'm going to rename that vocal Okay, and hit return and you can see here in the score that it's now changed so I'm going to do this for piano as well so change that to piano and now you can see in my piano uh, staff that um, I have the right name now then if I go back to um, now for some reason it keeps going back to instrument one so you can see now that I have the uh, track names here, but I don't actually want them at the start there. So I'm going to go to numbers and names. And instead of saying beside staffs, I'm going to change this to above staffs. Now, as you can see, I've got a little clash here um, with my bar numbers. Obviously, that's pretty obvious that it's bar one, but I may want to get that out of the way. And I can do that by changing the uh, names vertical position here. So 
I can just move that up then that's a little bit better now most of the time you don't need a, a track name if you're dealing with a lot of instruments uh, especially um, in orchestration you're going to want to put the names um, by the side if we go back to uh, Firefox here and you look at this uh, uh, picture of this classical score you'll see that the uh, names are uh, written down the side that's just so you know every player knows uh, what line to read from okay so uh, that's that and this is looking actually you know pretty much like I want it really um, you know these are a bit bunched up at the moment but that's going to change um, when I add my text in but maybe what I'll do is just for now I'll go back to global and I'll say okay let's have four bars per line okay now let's just close that out and if I just shrink this down you can see that's nicely spaced out lots of room uh, very simple to read and that's doing the job uh, pretty much just fine okay now then um, there's one more in fact let me access this via uh, project settings score tablature I don't need chords and grids I'm not really bothered about at this moment um, the layout I'm happy with the thickness of my lines I think that's going to print out pretty well um, so I don't really want to change that you know I could change the thickness of these bar lines as you can see they're getting rather chunky now I think you can go up to eight there um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to keep that as is clefs and signatures now your clef um, is this symbol here at the start and that tells you kind of what range you're in now I don't want to go into this um, right now because I'm going to cover that in the next uh, video um, but you can choose whether you want these to be on every line and it's a good idea that you do that uh, that is pretty standard uh, your key signature doesn't necessarily have to be on every line. Um, if it's not changing, you know, uh, it can just be at the start. Um, your key signature, now we're in C major and we don't have a key signature here. There's no need for one because we have no sharps and flats. Like I said, I'll explain that in the next video. Um, so I'm pretty happy um, that, you know, this is pretty good. Just to give you an example of how this might change the layout. Um, you know, I could just say first off on page one and you can see here that my clefts have disappeared. That's not necessarily a good thing. So let's re-enable that. Um, so as for formatting, you know, this is probably going to print out pretty well. Um, so I think we can move on uh, to the next video. There's not a lot to see there. Um, so I will see you uh, in the next video.